All right. <clears throat> so I think what I'm going to do, actually, is the, uh, the how to play stream, because that's something I haven't done yet for this game, whereas I have done it for Uh, all the other games I've played on stream. Uh, so this this will be, you know, how do you play the game? And I'll do non shiny. I don't know why that picture isn't changing here. Let's let's, let's try. There we go. Cool. Uh, non shiny characters. Uh, just so everybody. Well, just just so nobody gets confused about who's who. Now, when you actually get the the base game just for the first time, uh, you will only have a subset of these heroes, like everything up to Wraith. So all of these heroes, and then these three as well, you will have access to. Uh, you probably won't have access to these variants. Uh, you have to unlock those by doing various things. Um, which you can go look up, otherwise I'll, I'll leave it as an exercise for the, for the viewer to figure out how to, how to get those. Uh, I'm not going to play with any variants for this one, I'm not going to play with the shiny collector's ones either, although they look awesome. Here, let's, let's just look at this. Ooh. Look, look at that shininess. I like it. Uh, uh, in terms of villains you start the game with, it's Baron Blade and then these three here. Uh, th those are the those are the, the base game villains uh, environments. You get these four on the left. And I think we're going to go to Dino Lands because I think that's the first environment I ever played in. Uh, it, with any amount of seriousness. Uh, the actual first environment I played in was Pike Industrial Complex and that was an interesting first game that somebody brought in their, uh... Yeah, Sentinels! Welcome to the channel! Uh, somebody brought in their game to Loading Ready Run Con? Lurcon, if you will. And that's the first time I ever played. With, with the paper game. So. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start this, and this is my walking through to how to actually play, which means I'll probably lose some of these viewers, uh... But really, my goal is to get at least one ex explanation stream per game that I play on the channel. Uh, so th this is what's happening now. Uh, and if you like the game, I highly recommend getting the di digital vi version. It's on Steam. Uh, if you like it a lot, I also highly recommend getting the physical copy. Um, also very fun, and then you can bring it around to your friend's place and get that going. So it's kind of hard to explain what happened on the villain's turn until it's past the villain's turn because it m keeps the action moving along. But let's let's find out what's going on. So Baron Blade starts on this side. That's that's what this first line means. He he just starts face up, uh, and one mobile def defense platform from his deck is put into play. So that all happens. Uh, while the defense platform is up, he is immune to damage. Uh, the defense platform itself has ten health. We have to try and take that out before we can hurt Baron Blade himself. At the start of the villain turn, uh, if there are 15 or more cards in the villain trash, Baron Blade's Terra Lunar Impulsion Beam activates, pulling the moon into the earth. Game over. I should mention now, for those of you who uh, don't want to watch a tutorial video, but want to watch actual content, I do have a couple of uh, videos saved for this game already. Uh, you can go back and watch those streams at your leisure. They were there were a couple of really really good games, including uh, the game where I got the achievement for having one hero left standing at one HP. Uh, did that on stream. It was a it's a very very fun game to to play. Highly recommend it. Go check it out. So back to what I was explaining. So the each turn can be split into a number of phases uh, for the villains and for the environment. Those phases are start of turn play a card, end of turn. Uh, so anything that happens at the start of turn will trigger. Uh, then they will play the top card of their deck, which uh, 
you can actually see, but it's not in actual order. It's important to note. Um, yeah, just play a random card from there, uh, and then they will do any end of turn stuff, such as what this guy does. So I will get to, to the Blade Battalion in a moment. At the start of the turn, if there are 15 more cards in the villain trash, uh, it's just game over. It's it's an alternate win condition. They don't have very many of those, but Baron Blade does happen to have one. It's just really hard to get to that point. He's got a couple of cards that'll make it easier for him, but for the most part, he's not going to get 15 cards in his trash before you end up flipping him. Speaking of that, when he would be destroyed, when he goes to 0 HP or less, his villain character card flips to the Vengeful Mad Scientist side instead. Uh, there are also a couple of other ways to destroy a target, uh, in addition to bringing it to 0 HP or less. And so, when you take him to zero, or when you destroy him, he flips to this side, and then he no longer has that condition. And when he flips, I will explain what's what he does on that side as well. We've already gone through the defense platform. Blade Battalion has 5 HP. It's another target. Anything with HP is a target. And at the end of the villain turn, this card deals the hero target with the highest HP, X melee damage, where X equals the current HP of this card. So... That's why Legacy, who had 32 health, uh, took 5 damage. Uh, so really, for these guys, they hit hard at first, but if you hurt, hit them back, they, they get weaker over time. Uh, and that's that was the end of turn that we saw. So now it's Legacy's turn. Heroes have a slightly different turn order. They do start of turn, play a card use a power, draw a card, and then finally end of turn. So Legacy had no start of turn actions, uh, so he's into his play a card phase. Uh, I'm not going to go over what every single individual card does. Um, I'll, I'll just explain the cards I am playing and why I am playing them. Uh, so dealing one target three melee damage seems like a pretty good idea to me. Uh, drawing a card also seems like a good idea. Card advantage is always always appreciated, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna play this one over the other three. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this guy so that he hits back weaker. Makes sense to me. So I drew my card off of the effect. Now it's my use a power phase. Every single hero has an innate power. That's the car the the power on their character card itself. So. For Legacy, it's until the start of my next turn, increase damage dealt by hero targets by one. Hero targets being any hero card that has health. That's the only power I have in play. Sometimes you will get other powers that let you do other things, such as that. So let's go back and look at that. That's, that's interesting. Uh, motivational charge. So... When it's in play, you gain this as a power you can use. Most people only can can only do one power per turn. Uh, sometimes you are able to do multiple powers per turn, uh, depending on the cards you have in play. The cards will tell you when that's a thing. When you can do multiple powers, you can't do the same instance of the same power more than once per turn. What I mean by that is, if I had multiple of this card in play, uh, this is a poor example, and I'll tell you why in a moment. If I had multiple of this card in play, I could use this power on this one, and then on the duplicate of this one, if I had access to two powers. I cannot, however, use this power on this card twice in the same turn. That's not actually allowed. The reason this card specifically is a bad example is uh, there's also keywords on every single card. So the reason this stays in play is because it's ongoing. Uh, for anybody who's ever played Magic, uh, it's like an enchantment, basically. So this is an ongoing card. It's also limited. You can only have one copy of this particular card in play because it's limited. That's what the keyword means. I could have other types of limited cards, like I could play this as well as the other one, but I can only have one of this card in play at any one time. 
Now we have Ra. Uh, so the card that Legacy used was a one-shot, just like all of these cards are one-shots. And that's, again, just like a... It, you, you play it, and then it goes to your discard pile after it does some effect. That's all. For Ra, I'm going to go ahead and summon the Staff of Ra, uh, which searches my deck for a copy of Staff of Ra, and then I get to draw a card, which was this Drawn to the Flame, and then I get to play a card. So this card lets me play an additional card by itself. It's, it's like a mega cantrip. Uh, then we have... I played the Staff of Ra, which I went and fetched. Uh, normally, when it enters play, you gain 3 HP. I was full, so that didn't matter. But now, my damage is increased by 1. And as a power, I could deal one target three projectile damage, and then destroy this card. And the reason destroy this card is second, is you do actually benefit from this plus one damage. So I'd get four damage for that attack, and then destroy. You'll see this card is also limited. It is a relic, which isn't terribly important for this, uh, for, for the base game. Um, so, don't worry about the relic part. Equipment is just like an artifact. Uh, so now I have use a power and both of these are highlighted, uh, but I don't want to destroy my Staff of Raw. Instead, I'm going to use my innate power and deal four damage to this mobile defense platform. The reason I'm dealing four, again, Legacy is pumping everybody by plus one. The Staff of Raw is pumping Raw by plus one. So I'm going to go ahead and deal four to that and then do my draw card, and then end my turn, and it goes to Tempest. Tempest does not have very good cards. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to play these Genebound Shackles. It increases the damage dealt by Tempest to the villain target with the highest HP by 2. Uh, unfortunately, Baron Blade has the highest HP, and so that bonus damage does nothing, because he is currently immune to damage from the Bumble Defense Platform. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and deal uh, one projectile damage increased by one, so two projectile damage to each target. That is Tempest's innate power. In this case, it only hurt the two opponent, uh, the, the, the two targets that were not immune to damage. Pterodactyl, Pterodactyl Thief. At the start of the environment turn, destroy all. Okay, I'll read that in a when it gets back to Legacy's turn. It wasn't important that turn. Ooh, this is going to hurt. So, the end of the villain turn. We are at the end of the villain turn now. This card deals each short target with two projectile damage and increase that by one for each mole defense platform in play. It's dealing three to everybody. There's nothing I can do about it, so I'm just going to let the, the machine do its work. Again, this is a target I can kill by just dealing damage to it. We also have this Pterodactyl Thief, who has 5 health, also a target. At the start of the environment turn, so we have a start of turn trigger, destroy all equipment cards. So this is an area where keyword really matters. Uh, put cards destroyed this way beneath this card. Then this card deals each hero target X sonic damage, where X equals the number of cards beneath this card. So that could add up if I play a lot of equipment. When this card is destroyed, return cards beneath this card to the player's hands. Uh, so we get them back to hand when we kill the Pterodactyl Thief. We don't have to worry about that part. For Legacy. Uh, so I, I'm, this is a strong card. The problem is I want to be able to buff the rest of the team. So instead I'm going to play Danger Sense, which makes Legacy immune to damage from environment cards. It's not super important right now. Uh, my goal is actually to kill this Pterodactyl Thief before it can do anything. But it, there are other dangerous environment cards, and having a character just be immune to that damage is going to be very powerful. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to deal... Three, sorry, five to the powered remote turrets. And the reason I'm doing five to this is I will end up dealing two fire, sorry, three fire damage to the other two targets. And then Tempest will hit every target as well. 
So this is the optimal way to split up my damage so I hurt everything as much as possible and actually I'll end up destroying everything except Baron Blade himself this round. That seems seems pretty good to me. Uh, because everything will die when Tempest attacks, I'm going to kill the defense platform now and then let Tempest deal with the rest himself. It didn't actually matter which one I of these things I hit. But that felt like a good option to me. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give reduced damage dealt to Tempest by one. Just all damage dealt to him. That's a pretty powerful effect. And then I'm going to deal my two damage to all targets. Now I did four damage to Baron Blade because remember I have these gene bound shackles. He has the most health, so I dealt bonus damage to him. Plus two damage. River of Lava. Ooh, this is going to hurt. Yeah. So, at the end of the environment turn, they're giving me a choice here. Each hero may destroy one of their equipment cards. Deal any hero that does not destroy an equipment card three fire damage. So, Legacy doesn't have any equipment, so he is auto-skipped. Uh, Ra has his Staff of Ra. I don't really want to lose the Staff of Ra, so I'm okay with Ra taking damage. Tempest uh, has his Genebound Shackles... I don't care too much about the Gene Bound Shackles, except they're helping me deal more damage. But he also has reduced da uh, damage is reduced to him. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to skip and let them all take this. Legacy's immune. Ra has a lot of health, and then Tempest reduced some of the damage. So now Baron Blade has played his own ongoing card, uh, which is going to make it harder for us to deal damage to him. There's only one villain target, in or one non-hero target, I should say, in play, so I don't really want to play this, which targets three things. I'll save that for when there are multiple things to hit. Instead, I will prepare for that eventuality by giving myself a surge of strength. So this is ongoing, increases damage dealt by legacy by one. So now this card will deal up to three targets, four melee damage each. Uh... Legacy himself won't be bonus benefiting from this bonus because it's start of turn that the bonus goes away. That the buff goes away. Ooh, Bolster Allies is a good card. So I have to decide what I want Ra to do. So I'm also reading River of Lava to see how to get rid of it. At the start of the environment turn, if each player discards the top three cards of their deck, destroy this card. That's... I don't really care about what's on top of my deck, uh, so I'm a-okay -okay doing that. I don't want to use Inferno, since again, there's only one target. I could use Flame Barrier, uh, so that every time a target deals damage to me, or sorry, the first time I am dealt damage by a target each turn, uh, I punch back for fire damage. Or I could just deal 5 to Baron Blade, and that'll be increased by 2 and then decreased by 1, so it's 6 damage overall. That's, that's a lot of damage. And it does pay to get him down as quickly as possible, because he is building up his Terra Lunar Impulsion Beam. It's up to, up to 3 out of 15. But it pays to get cards like this out early, so that it does more damage over its lifetime. So I'm going to get Flame Barrier out, and then I'm just going to hit Baron Blade for the three from my innate power and say okay. Tempest has a fun, fun card. Localized Hurricane. And I'm probably playing this. It gives me a new power. It also increases damage dealt to me by one, which effectively negates my otherworldly resili resilience. But as a power, I can deal up to two targets, three projectile damage each, and that will... Uh, get even higher using Legacy's ability and my Gene Bound Shackles. Also, I may draw two cards. This is how Tempest just churns through his deck and gets to the the really good cards that he wants. He just uses his localized Hurricane to dig through as fast as possible. So you'll see three cards getting drawn here. Two for the Hurricane and one for the end of turn. Or the, the, the draw card phase. Uh, and yes, we are okay, discarding three from each deck. River of Lava is destroyed. Volcanic Eruption? Ooh. That's a lot of damage. I saw the number seven, seven damage. 
Oh, okay. So he's also hurting people. Here's something interesting. Three damage legacy because of Nemesis. Uh, I will explain when I get back to my turn what that means. Oh, and then he becomes immune again. Uh, so not only did he deal the damage, he got to play an additional card. Okay. At the start of the environment turn, deal each target seven fire damage. That's a lot. At the start of their turn, a player may skip the rest of their turn to destroy this card. That sounds interesting. Uh, when this card is destroyed, move one copy of the card Obsidian Field from the environment trash into play. Uh, there are no Obsidian Fields in the environment trash right now. But I think what I'm going to do is let, let uh, Tempest take care of it. He has a card that just destroys environment cards, and that means I'm not skipping anybody's turn. Yes, so, why did Baron Blade deal 3 damage to Legacy instead of 2? You'll notice if you look at his card, he's got this symbol here. Legacy has a matching symbol. That means they are each other's nemesis. When they deal damage to each other, they deal a bonus damage. You know, as it turns out, Legacy doesn't have deal a lot of damage. Uh... Which means it's mostly Baron Blade just dealing damage to Legacy. I'm gonna have everybody in the team draw a card. As the primary support, that seems like a good thing for Legacy to do, and then I'm gonna up our damage again. Same same deal, twice times, twice times. Uh, Ra is also not gonna skip this turn. Ra is going to kill off this mobile defense platform as quickly as he can, which, as it turns out, is going to be this turn. Yep. Just a whole heap of damage. And the defense platform is dead. I will not skip the rest of my turn. I'm going to go ahead and flash flood to kill that volcanic eruption. And then I'm going to once again deal 5 damage to Baron Blade and draw, draw 2. And then draw for my turn. We go back to environment turn. We have another Pterodactyl Thief there. As we've seen, they're not too dangerous if, if you can deal damage to them. And Baron Blade gets his third and final mobile defense platform into play. That's kind of unlucky for me that he just keeps drawing that. But at the same time, he's not really doing anything to threaten me, so... It's not too worrying. And Ra can once again just take him out in one shot. Or take it out in one shot. Although... I think what I'm going to do this turn... Is... Uh, use my Inferno so that I could also hit the Pterodactyl Thief. Because I want to make sure that's not hurting us. And then I'm just going to go ahead and skip the rest of the damage because it doesn't matter. And then I will hurt this. And that's my turn. Uh, so Tempest has a lot of stuff he can do. Uh, some interesting choices, and I think a choice I'm going to make, Chain Lightning. So I get to go ahead and deal 4 damage to something, increase to 5. I'm going to deal that to the defense platform, then 3 damage to a second target. I'm going to deal that to Baron Blade. And then 2 damage to a third target, which goes at the Pterodactyl Thief. And then, once again, I can use my Look Less Hurricane, deal as much as I can to Baron Blade. The goal being just to hit him down as fast as possible. He's at 6 out of 15. Two-fifths of the way there. So now there's an obsidian field. It increases all damage by two, by, by one. Including this attack, which is unfortunate. So now he'll deal... He would have dealt three to, uh, four to Legacy. Legacy does have armor now, which uh, prevents one of that. And now Baron Blade has double living force field. That's that's starting to get annoying. 
Incre I mean, decreasing all of my damage dealt to him by two is rough for me. I think at this point, I'm going to lay this out. I'm not going to uh, use it, but I want it out in case I draw a particular card in my deck, uh, the Legacy Ring, which lets me use two powers every turn. Uh, at the start of their turn, one player may discard two cards to destroy this card. No, I kind of like the Obsidian Field. I like bonus damage. Uh, I have more people attacking than Baron Blade does. I figure I have a slight advantage in the by having this bonus damage. So right now, I am just cycling through my summon staffs because they get me bonus cards. If I wanted to... I could uh, use my Flame Spike to hit Baron Blade and then gain an additional power for my turn, which means I could use my innate power and then kill my staff, which means next turn I could play a different staff and regen 3 health. That's, that's an option I'm keeping in mind. I don't think it's what I'm actually going to do. So let's do some calculations. Uh, 5 is the base damage. Let's minus 2 from that, so 3. Then I get plus one from Staff of Ra, plus one from Legacy, plus one from Obsidian Field. That's a total of six damage. That's all I need. I can go ahead and use Fire Blast just to flip Baron Blade. So he flips. And all that sound you heard was when flipped, uh, his maximum HP becomes 30, and he's restored to 30. The villain trash is placed on top of the villain deck. All three copies of Mole Defense Platform are moved to the villain trash. That's why there's three cards in here now. And the villain deck is shuffled. So the sound was the shuffling. At the end of the villain turn, Baron Blade deals the hero target with the highest HP, 3 energy damage. So now we've basically destroyed his Terra Lunar Impulsion Beam, and he's, he's upset about it. Um, he's throwing a tantrum. So now he's starting to attack us. He's got some sort of mech suit here. I will just continue the beats. What I really like is something that can destroy ongoing cards, which exist. Uh, Tempest definitely has some in his deck. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, Tempest, what do you want to do with your turn? He's got a couple of options. He could draw three. It's, it's boring, but if you want to turn through your deck. But I've already got a big card draw engine, so I'm okay with that. I could gain a new power. Uh, each hero target regains 2 HP, that's... This is one of the best heals in the game. So, if you're looking for healing, that's the one to get. Tempest is a great character to have in your party uh, when you're just starting out with this game. Shielding wins. Whenever a hero target would be dealt 5 or more damage from a single source, reduce that damage by 2. I like that. I'm going to play that. I'm going to proactively defend us rather than trying to heal up the damage he's dealing to us. Again, these things are more effective the earlier you play them. The, the, the benefit you get from them adds up faster. Or more, not faster. Uh, oh, it's at the end of their turn. So I could destroy it now, and then Baron Blade will not have access to that plus one damage. But again, I kind of like having it around. I think it's benefiting me more than it's benefiting him. That said, when we run into a river of lava, things tend to change. So at this time... I am going to go ahead and let Ra destroy his Staff of Ra. Uh, because I would like him to be able to heal three instead of taking three. Legacy is immune. Let's apply the shielding winds first, which means it's reduced by two, and then I reduce it further by one, uh, which means I only take two damage off of that. Pretty good move. Another blade battalion, once again, shielding winds is going to be a great choice here. Because it's reducing that damage that we take. Beautiful. 
Legacy has not drawn his ring yet, but now there are multiple targets. I'm going to choose now to use this. Just get as much damage in there as possible. I do get my uh, Nemesis bonus against Baron Blade here. Then I'm going to increase everybody else's damage. I really don't need another Danger Sense. Uh, Ra, as we discussed, we're going to play another Staff of Ra, so we heal three, and we still retain our bonus damage. Let's just deal do our innate power right to his face. Sounds like a good plan to me. Alright, normally what I would do with Tempest at this stage is use, uh, not Cleansing Downpour, but Electrical Storm. Uh, which, at the start of my turn, Tempest deals each non-hero target one lightning damage. The problem is, there's one non-hero target, and that's not changing very quickly. So I think I just want to maximize my damage against him, so I'm just going to chain lightning here. Deal six, and then not deal anything more. And then I'm going to... use another localized hurricane, and he's on death's door. And I'm continuing to just draw draw my deck, basically. You can see Tempest has 15 cards in hand. Uh, again, I don't care what's on top of my deck, I'm just going to let everything get discarded. That could be where Legacy's Ring is. It's possible. Each hero may destroy one of their ongoing cards. Okay. Uh, I don't really care about... Actually, he's immune to environment damage. I don't care about him. Uh, I don't... I'm just going to keep that in play. I'm actually just going to keep his... Uh, you know what? I, we don't need this. Right. And then Legacy's immune. Alright, cool. The reason... Yeah. The reason I kept the Flame Barrier in play is for what's about to happen. <laughs> okay. We managed to kill Baron Blade uh, with a counterattack, which was pretty pathetic on his part, let's be honest. And that's that's the game of Sentinels. We reduced him his second form to zero HP, and so he lost. That is how you play Sentinels. Now that I've got